Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, in most countries, in my country, when there's an election, there's a sense of renewal, a sense of hope or change. Now, did anyone feel any hope for change coming out of what happened in Tehran? I didn't think so. The people of Iran faced an election with only one choice, more of the same. Now, as Bill Richardson mentioned, not only did the Guardian Council not allow Iraq's and Johnny to run, they also did not qualify a clone of Ahmadinejad, although I can't fault them for that logic. But as we know, all of these candidates represented a regime were handpicked by the regime that has driven Iran into a ditch through 35 years of leadership. But if there's a silver lining in this election, it was not what the candidates represented, it was the message that the people of Iran sent to the Ayatollah. We can do better. We want change. Now, we want a real choice. But what would that choice look like? Imagine a candidate who offered the people of Iran what they truly deserve, a candidate with a 21st century plan for Iran rather than a 10th century plan for Iran. A real choice would include a candidate who wants Iran to be a constructive actor and not a pariah. A real choice would be someone who believes that human rights and civil rights are more important than nuclear rights. Someone who understands the purpose of the state is to serve the people, not the other way around. Someone prepared to represent all Iranians, including not just the men of Iran, but also the women as well. Imagine equal opportunity in political, economic, and social life. No wonder the Ayatollah fears you. Do we know someone who might offer that kind of real choice to the people of Iran? Yes, we do. Now, think about it, Madam President, but don't you think? Something very important for one of the most influential countries in an important region in the world. Can Iran change? Yes, it can. Will Iran change? Change in Iran is inevitable. When will Iran change? That is the challenge of our generation. That is what brings us here. That someday, whether it's four years from now, eight years from now, however long it takes, we will bring to the people of Iran a genuine vote for change. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's an honor to be with you today. Uh, before I offer my formal remarks, I'd like to say in your native language, Man Baroya, Azdas, Raftana, Jana, and Sanha, Dar Kampa Liberty, the CR Mota Asaf Astam. Vabe, Hameya, Dustan Va, Hanavadhaya, Anha, Tazliat, Migoyam. For years now, Madam Rajavi and all of you have been warning the world about the Islamic Republic of Iran's murderous ambitions. You've warned of Iran's efforts to increase its power and influence across the Middle East. We see that most noticeably today in Syria, arming the regime, training its security forces, mobilizing Hezbollah. Iran is interfering in other countries as well, not just Syria. It is interfering in Yemen, where it continues to arm extremists. It's interfering in Bahrain and the other Gulf states. It has persisted with a nuclear weapons program that violates its international commitments. And of course, Iran continues to violate the basic human rights of 75 million Iranians who only want to speak as they please, dress as they please, worship as they please, and create a better future for their children. 
All this you have been telling the world for years. You have exposed Tehran's lies and false promises. You have uncovered Tehran's secret nuclear weapons program. You have challenged Tehran by your public commitment to a democratic Iran based on the rule of law and at peace with its neighbors. Just by being here today, you have defied Tehran with your hope for a brighter future for your country that will one day be led by Madame Rajavi. And no one, no one has been braver, no one has been more courageous than your friends and relatives and loved ones in camps Ashraf and Liberty. They are on the front lines of this battle against the mullahs, and they have paid a heavy price. After the recent election, we are now hearing calls for the United States to relax sanctions against the regime. And there is concern that the Obama administration may be heeding these calls. As you well know, nothing could be more dangerous. So I must ask you again, here, today, please continue to tell the world the truth about the regime in Tehran, the truth about the mullahs, the truth about the nuclear program, the truth about the massive violation of human rights. We need to hear your voice. The people of Iran need to hear your voice. The world needs to hear your voice. Thank you. You have wasted no time here, however, to send an important message. I want you to understand one thing. For all of my colleagues who have been here tonight, we are so proud of you. We are so proud of the strength that you have shown today. We, you deserve our thanks for your courage and for your commitment to freedom. I want you to understand, when Patrick Kennedy's uncle, Robert Kennedy, went to South Africa decades ago, before Nelson Mandela was released, he said that the, to the people of South Africa, when you toss a stone in a pond, it sends ripples of hope and freedom. What you are doing is sending ripples and hope of freedom to the people of Iran. I want you to send an important message that everyone should hear in Camp Ashraf and Camp Liberty, that help is on the way. When, when, when Mayor Giuliani, when Mayor Giuliani went to the people of New York after 9-11, on the day of 9-11, he said to them, help is on the way. When Governor Ridge took over the head of his Homeland Security Department, he told the American people, help is on the way. I want you to hear you say to the people of Iran, help is on the way. I want you to say to the people of Camp Ashraf, help is on the way. I want you to say to the world that you represent freedom for the people of Iran and by telling them help is on the way. Azadi Barea Iran. 